Chinese bank and I'm a service and quality technician. I will demonstrate to you how to calibrate the CIF tester. Calibration consists of, of, of two stages. One stage is the calibration of uh, force gauge, marked and force gauge. Another part is actually checking the speed of the plane is correct as per standard requirements, which is 150 millimeters per minute, plus minus 30. Uh, we'll start with the uh, calibration of, of the speed, or checking of the speed. And for that, you will need a uh, mobile phone or stopwatch, if you don't have a uh, stopwatch. And you will need uh, to, to remove sled and rod. You will need pencil. And you will need a uh, good quality uh, ruler or digital vernier or anything that can measure precisely up to one millimeter. To start with, you will need to turn power button on. You got second button, which is named motor. You you're going to engage that button together with stopwatch once when you're ready to do it. I'll demonstrate to you. First, you return the plane back to starting point or close point. Then you mark with pencil starting position. That mark you can remove later, or you can use it for for uh, recalibration next time. Uh, adjust your timer to zero and then simultaneously press motor and start. After 60 seconds, you will basically turn off the motor by pressing the same button. And then you will measure the difference. The difference you're measuring is actually in this line next position of it, which we're going to demonstrate as soon as it's off. Okay, it's one minute. So, after that, so you're going to mark second position. You can remove it or put on side, whatever. And then you measure the distance. Okay. Now, in this case, what I got, did you take the... Uh, we're talking about 175 millimeters per minute, which is within the spec range. Second stage is calibration of um, force gauge. For that you will need to remove uh, all other bits and pieces. And you will need actually a set of weights. Now uh, this is called knob weights, the stainless steel, the calibrated weights. And uh, for calibration of CRF testing, normally we calibrate it from 100 to 500 grams. So we'll need one or 100, two or 200, and one 500. To start with, <coughs> you have to put the instrument on the top. Upright, right, like this. Now, to operate gauge, you'll need to start to press the power button, obviously. And um, you've got selection of units, but it's already, it's in kilograms. So this is what we want, actually, to calibrate in kilograms. Because you're going to have uh, weights in grams. You can use some... Um, in your case, you could make something like this, just a, a strong uh, piece of strings tied together. Or you can use something what we got. I, I don't believe you can find it. It's what we made. It's 
and it's more professional, or this one we got with four angles. But this is for more uh, weight than what you're going to do. So, in your case, if you just make two strings like that, will be enough. Put both of them on a hook, and then zero. Once you zero it, you can make, you take it like this, open it up and make actually a very loose thing like this. Okay, so it's loop, it's free loop. And you can place your weight, we'll start with 100, just you place your weight around and tighten it up, basically. Okay? It's just normal, very easy. Single loop, I'll do it once again. There we go. Okay. Open it up, go across, and then you can place your weight. Now you can remove it because you already zero it with the string, so that doesn't disturb anything. Okay. Now it weighs exactly 100 grams. Okay. Now, next one, we're doing 100, 200, 300, 400, 500. We remove 100. Apply 200. Same way. It's 200. Now, we use second string. And create a loop for 100 as well. So in combination, you've got 100 and 200 weight. Together, you've got 300. Okay. Obviously, all this needs to be recorded. But this is just a demonstration. I'm not doing any recording. And this is 2 times 200, so you've got 400 there. And finally, we remove all of them, and there's 500. If you don't have 500, you can combine Two of two hundred and one of one hundred, and I can show you how you can do that. You can take one of them and make two loops. Okay, another one. Make second one. Put them together. Okay, and like this, you can just hang the weights on. And for one hundred, do it normal. One is stabilized and should read 500 and says 500. So, this is in case that you don't have 500 uh, knob weight, only 100 or 200. So, you can make combinations like that. Now, uh, you should do uh, test three times minimum in order to, to have uh, reproducibility and repeatability. You can do that. Basically, you can work out in your calibration report accuracy and repeatability, these two things. And um, so that would be this part of how to calibrate, basically. I'll see how I've tested. If you've got any questions, so you can email Brendan or myself on ben at idminstrument.com.au. We'll be happy.